your family, congratulations. Your words speak all. It's my privilege uh, for me to introduce my friend. Uh, a number of you already know him. Maybe uh, everybody. And you're very aware of her many accomplishments. If you weren't aware, you could read it. You're in the world. But the Edith I'd like to introduce to you today is more than the sum of her accomplishments. It's someone whose past history is well grounded in the goals and aspirations of the Edith. I speak of this history briefly, only to provide a context. I know that Edith will uh, want to talk to you more about this and her remarks. But I ask you to come back with me for a moment, to another time, another place. I ask you to come back to me and with me to uh, Riga, Latvia, in the year 1939 and introduce to you author Udith, his father, who is known by another name. <coughs> He's a young man, a former member of the Calvary, attended university. He fell in love with Judith Gold, and he wanted to marry her. It was tough times back then for a Jewish family. Anti-Semitism was at its peak and increased. Arthur was unique. Arthur had this quality to understand reality. And he could see what was happening. He could see the dark clouds gathering in Germany and in Russia. So he came to, to the father and said, I want to marry you. And I want your permission to take her with me, to leave, to leave the family. Father gave permission. They left with two suitcases. It was very hard to leave the family. They did not return to the and Arthur until some 60 years later. They left with false papers. Can you imagine this journey? Traveling with false papers through Germany in 1939. Can you imagine what that must have been like? Travel to Italy and to be the one to leave on the last ship from Italy out of Italy to the United States. You might remember Schindler's List by Stephen Spielberg. <laughs> Judith was interviewed uh, for it was less the DVD was made up here traffic. My point in telling you about this, about the family's journey, is that it took a toll on Walter and Judith, and also on Edith and her brother, Steve. Walter became quiet, meditative, did not want to call attention to himself, to any authority. Judith, she was a work of nature, small in stature. I don't have to tell a family what a diamond. Either, Stephen, education. Do it because it's something you can take with you if you have to fool. Do more, do better. Right. So this is translated into Edith's mantra for life. I can do that. I had the privilege of knowing author and Judith. I cared for each of them greatly and listened to their stories. But you didn't want to get on Judith's wrong side. Wrong on Edith's. You never underestimated Edith. Her family experience forged in Edith a rock hard determination, a fierce opposition to tyranny and discrimination in any form a need to further her education, and a compelling desire to succeed, to transcend any fear of authority, 
for a while. And all of this was fueled, uh, fueled by an inexhaustible supply of energy. Some of you may have noticed Edith's energy, determination, and focus. I, for one, cannot keep up with her. So, Edith, I want to introduce to you today is the one you might know, may not know so well in the written materials. It's the Edith who worked her way through the college and the cafeteria to help uh, pay for school. It's the Edith who went to Woodstock and did what I'm not going to talk about. <laughs> it's the Edith who went to Washington, D.C. and protested, protested against the war in Vietnam on waving signs and stood who spent her junior year abroad in Spain and paid for it in part by working as a go-go go -go dancer at the Yoga Yoga nightclub. She said that was good enough. <laughs> it's the year who came back to the United States and worked as a counselor in a methadone clinic in New York and later as a school teacher with a temporary teaching system. It's the one who supported her then husband through medical school in Belgium by using her unusual gift of speaking five different languages. Who we went to the University of Miami Law School full time, being a full time mom to Jackie and Dan, and took uh, her children to more bar functions than anywhere in this world. So, my friend Edith is also a person of first. She became the first woman president of both the Dade County and statewide Florida League of Women Lawyers. The first woman elected to the executive committee of the Florida Board of Governors. The first woman to run on the court after my colleague Pat Snyder. For president of the Florida Hall. And as president, she sponsored a joint project with Paul and the Florida Bar to produce the first written history of the first 150 women who practiced law in the state of Florida. And now is serving as the first female attorney president of the Florida Supreme Court Historical Society. I can go, but I'm not. How best to introduce my friend Edith? Well, perhaps by quoting from an unknown author who could have been writing about her. Have the courage to throw yourself into life, to take risks, to weather blows, knowing before you begin that you will be exposed to a series of obstacles, success and failure, happiness and unhappiness, praise and blame. Do all these things without expectation or desire. Do these things with equanimity and for the good of all. And perhaps at the end of the day, the grace of God will smile. I introduce my friend Edith. 